Have you been asked to demonstrate TSAX compliance or would you like to receive TSAX results from your business partners? If so, you'll need to register on the ENX portal. In this video, we'll guide you through the TSAX registration process step by step, introduce you to the different types of TSAX participants and explain key concepts such as the TSAX scope, assessment objectives, locations and how assessment results are exchanged. If you'd like to explore any of these topics in more detail, please refer to the TSAX Participant Handbook. The handbook covers the entire TSAX process and contains all the essential information you'll need. It's available in multiple languages and you'll find the link in the video description. Basics Anyone wishing to take part in TSAX must register via the ENX portal and accept the terms and conditions of participation. All participants are treated equally and are subject to the same contractual obligations. If you publish your assessment results on the portal, you'll be able to view the results of other companies as well. Additionally, you can choose to share your assessment results directly with selected participants. TSAX Participants A TSAX participant primarily refers to the registered company. Multiple individuals from your company can be set up as users on the portal, each with different permissions. For example, you might appoint an administrator. TSAX participants share their assessment results with other registered companies through the ENX portal. Those participants can see your results if they also share theirs. This means that companies within a supply chain can both prove to their customers that they manage information in cybersecurity and oversee the security and resilience of their suppliers and service providers. The ENX Portal So how does this work all in practice? Your starting point for TSAX registration is the ENX website. Here you can register for TSAX, ENX VCS and the ENX network. To start your TSAX registration, simply click register below the TSAX logo. If you've received an invitation link, it means a colleague has already added you to your company account and you can continue from there. But let's begin from scratch. First, create your personal user account. The person who will manage the company account with administrative rights should complete this step. Enter your email address and choose a password. After reading and accepting the portal's terms of use, add your personal details. Then confirm your email address via the link sent to your inbox. That's it. You can now log into the ENX portal with your new account. TSAX Registration Once inside the ENX portal, you'll be prompted to register your company for TSAX. Before proceeding, please check whether your company is already registered to avoid any duplicates. Alongside your company name and address, you'll need to provide organizational information, such as your company size. Carefully read the terms and conditions for TSAX participation and the notice regarding the release of confidentiality obligations for audit providers. Some audit providers are bound by professional secrecy, so they are required to maintain confidentiality under professional law. In order for ENX to perform its governance tasks, these providers need access to TSAX relevant information. To this end, audit providers must be released from their confidentiality obligations. You must accept the terms and conditions to continue with the registration process. Because you've just created your company profile, you'll automatically be the TSAX administrator. We recommend assigning at least one additional TSAX administrator for backup. The TSAX Scope 
TSEX assessments are conducted by independent audit providers. To help your audit provider know exactly what to assess, you'll need to define your assessment scope. This scope is a key part of the audit provider's task description outlining what should and shouldn't be assessed. A well-defined scope is also essential for accurate cost estimates from TSAX audit providers. You'll pay a fee to register your scope. At the start of the scope registration, you'll be asked to confirm you're aware of this. You can name your scope as you like. We recommend including the year, since assessments are repeated every three years. This makes it much easier to identify which scope is current next time round. It is also best to add the area that has been assessed. The scope name is for your internal reference and will appear on the invoice, but it doesn't affect the assessment process itself. The standard scope forms the basis for a consistent TSAX assessment. It defines how the scope is influenced by your locations and the assessment objectives. In general, TSAX participants will only accept your assessment result if it's based on at least the standard scope. So we recommend you select this option if you're unsure. The standard scope is predefined and can't be changed by participants. It's important to note that TSAX differs from ISO management system certifications when it comes to defining the scope. With ISO certification, the organization defines the scope of its management system and has complete freedom in doing so. The audit scope must match the management system scope. So you could, for example, limit the scope to a single department. In contrast, TSAX uses a standard scope to ensure results are comparable across organizations. Let's quickly run through what the standard scope covers. The TSAC scope defines the scope of the assessment. The assessment includes all processes, procedures and resources under responsibility of the assessed organization that are relevant to the security of the protection objects and their protection goals as defined in the listed assessment objectives at the listed locations. The assessment is conducted at least in the highest assessment level listed in any of the listed assessment objectives. All assessment criteria listed in the listed assessment objectives are subject to the assessment. We'll return to some of these points later in the process. When you register a scope, you'll automatically be assigned as the main contact. You can add further contacts if needed. Each user added as a scope contact can view and edit the scope. But only specific roles, such as the TSAC scope administrator, can create scopes or locations or manage users. The scope creator is already the main contact, so there's no need to add yourself again. Assessment objectives Next, you'll need to define the assessment objectives for your scope. This lets you tailor the assessment to your individual needs or those of your customers. For example, you might need to demonstrate prototype protection or you may process personal data on behalf of a customer, acting as a processor under Article 28 of the GDPR. As these objectives won't be relevant to every company, you can select the ones that apply to you or your customer's requirements. The Objectives Wizard can help you identifying which assessment objectives fit your needs and those of your contractual partners. Different assessment objectives require varying types and depths of assessment, which are called assessment levels. For instance, some objectives require a remote assessment, while others, like prototype protection, will need an on-site visit to evaluate your infrastructure. Locations Even if your organization's ISMS is centrally managed, each location within your defined scope must be considered separately, as each has its own unique conditions, assets and operations. For example, there may be location-specific service providers, such as cleaning services or gardeners on-site. Emergency plans are also always location-specific. You'll need to add at least one location to your scope. All locations with the same assessment objectives can be combined into a single scope. If you have locations that require additional or different objectives, 
scopes such as prototype protection, it's necessary to create separate scopes for them. Every location within a scope is assessed against the same objectives. You'll also need to provide details such as the address, industry and size of each location. Please also provide details about your ISMS and whether you are working with a consultant. You can also enter a time window in which the assessment should take place. This information helps the audit providers to estimate the effort of the assessment and check in advance whether they can deliver within the required time frame. Can you still change the scope after registration? If you need to make changes to your scope after registering, only your audit provider can update it, not you directly. It's best to discuss any adjustments with them. For example, a location may be removed if it doesn't meet all the criteria at the time of assessment. If something is added to the scope, the registration fee will increase. But there's no refund for removing locations, since your audit provider used the original scope as the basis for their calculation, you may also have to expect changes there. Exchanging assessment results The aim of TSAX is to increase the resilience of the supply chain. It provides standardized assessments of robust information security management systems and enables the secure exchange of assessment results with business partners. This ability to share results via the ENX portal is a key feature of TSAX, setting it apart from other standards like ISO 27001. Assessment objectives are linked to TSAX labels. A successful assessment will result in one or more labels, depending on the scope. To allow your partners to see your results, you'll need to release them in the portal. There are two ways to do this – publishing and sharing. When you publish, your assessment results become visible as a TSAX label to all current and future participants. Only positive outcomes are published. When sharing, you choose specific participants who can view your results. You'll need their participant ID if they are not listed. Once you have registered your scope, you can share scope information individually with other participants. This allows them to view initial status information, for example, whether an assessment has been commissioned. As soon as your assessment result is available, your partner will automatically have access to it. If you only exchange your assessment result, it will be visible as soon as the assessment result is available in your account. In addition, you can download your assessment results with labels as a PDF document to share with your business partner. When releasing assessment results, you can select the detail level. This defines the depth to which TSAX participants or your business partner can access your assessment results. The detail levels refer to the assessment report of the audit provider. You can choose to publish or share at any time, but keep in mind that once done, it cannot be reversed. Additionally, you can only increase the detail level, not reduce it. This ensures reliability and integrity of the process. Important note! Assessment results may only be shared via the ENX portal. There's a link in the video description with guidance on how to reference your TSAX label outside the portal. Invoice information In the final stage of scope registration, enter your billing details. Invoicing is automated, so please ensure your information is correct. For companies based in the EU, you must provide your VAT number. If this is entered incorrectly, registration cannot be completed. Please check with your finance or tax department if you're unsure. Review all the details you have entered and confirm by ticking the checkbox. Depending on your country, you can pay by bank transfer or credit card. If you register a scope but do not complete an assessment, the scope remains valid. 
You can decide to proceed with the assessment at a later time using the same scope. However, the scope registration fee is still charged, even if you ultimately choose not to be assessed. Once you confirm your order, ENX will review your submission and carry out routine checks. This may take up to two business days and you'll receive a notification by email when it's complete. At this point, you can select TSAX audit providers to request quotes using the information you've provided. Congratulations! You have now successfully registered your TSAX scope. After watching this video, we encourage you once again to read through the TSAX participant handbook. We hope this video has given you a clear understanding of the TSAX registration process and how to share assessment results. Speaking of sharing, please feel free to share our videos with others, even if they haven't registered for a TSAX scope. If you found this video helpful, we'd greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe. You can find us on YouTube and LinkedIn.